Hey there Wargamers and welcome back to another Wargames Delivered video. In this video, we're going to go over layering on a robe. Let's get started. Alright, so to start this video off, we're going to uh, start with this model here. This is the uh, Tiefling Warlock from the Game Master Character Paint set. Uh, and I have painted it entirely, uh, on the cloak at least, um, alien purple, front and back here. Um, so our first step here is we're going to make a wash for this model. Uh, we don't, I don't have the purple wash uh, myself, so what we're going to do is take blue and red here, use a little bit of color theory, and mix those two together. And as you can see here on our palette, it turned into a nice dark purple wash. So, uh, first things first, we're going to uh, just cover the entire model, um, at least the entire cloak with this, with this wash. You don't have to do this. If you like pin washing more, you can absolutely switch to pin washing. For me, I'm a horrible pin washer and it's just easier for me to cover the entire model in the wash and then go over and layer later on. Um, that's just how I like to work. If you're, if you're good at pin washing, I, I think that's easier. Um, I'm just, I'm horrible at it, at it like I said. So um, that's my reasoning for doing this. Uh, you absolutely don't have to do it this way. And as always with the washes, be sure to give this about 45 minutes to an hour to dry uh, before you go in for the next step here. So as you can see, that step has established some nice shadows for us. Uh, and so now we will switch over to the first step of our layering process, which will be to build up our mid-tone again with Alien Purple. So we're going to go back to this and we're going to basically just leave all of the recessed areas with the shade uh, as they are, and then we're going to cover everything else. So just pretty much reestablishing our mid-tone. Um, use your better judgment and just kind of decide what you think would be a little bit more highlighted and what would still be left uh, shaded and in the shadows. And when layering, sometimes it's easier to just fix your mistakes right away rather than waiting until the next step. So uh, if you do make any mistakes or you cover up any recessed areas that you want to be shaded, uh, just go back in with the wash and cover that area in as soon as the uh, alien purple is dry. And while you're doing this step, try to think about where the light would be hitting the model the most. So for instance, that top sleeve uh, is probably where a lot of light is going to be hitting on this model. So that's one of the areas that we're going to want to highlight uh, heavier than most. Now, as you can see, we built back up our mid-tone and left just the shadows in the deepest recesses here on the model. And for our next step, we're going to start building up some highlights on the model here. So we have Mutant Hue, and this is a very bright highlight. So we're not going to want to go to this right away. What we're going to do is mix this in to the alien purple and we're going to slowly build our way to the mutant hue so that we have a nice gradient in between the colors uh, that we have. So we're looking for about that kind of almost dark periwinkle kind of color here. And we're going to very slowly uh, go over all of the raised areas of the model. Anything that you think the light would be catching would be standing out more on the model, etc. So. S slowly take your time this is a uh, time-consuming process and can be frustrating um, just take your time and really try to avoid making as many mistakes as you can um, and if you do make any mistakes just go right back to the alien purple and cover them up immediately and so without spoiling too much of the remainder of the video um, a lot of the remaining steps are going to be very similar to this step that we did here. So as you can see, we built up a nice highlight here on the model, very faint highlight, but a highlight nonetheless. And as you can see, we are going to uh, keep going on the back and the front here, um, switching over to uh, our alien purple again. We're going to go and cover any areas that we may have we're a little bit too sloppy on or anything that we decided we don't really like uh, looking over the model. So pretty much after each highlighting step, you'll want to do a check with the previous color that you used and just kind of clean up and make sure that everything is uh, to your liking on the model. And moving from this step, we're actually going to move right into our next uh, layering phase. And for the next layering phase, we're actually just going to be doing a little bit more of the same thing, but with a uh, lighter highlight. So we're going to take Alien Purple and do the reverse thing. 
that we did before here. So we're going to take alien purple and mix it into the mutant hue, uh, getting a majority of the mutant hue over the uh, alien purple so that you can see um, we have a bit of a lighter highlight here. And with this, we're going to pick out more raised areas on the model, but just be a little bit more selective than you were last time. So don't go for every single area that you, you picked out last time. Leave a little bit of that uh, darker alien purple mutant hue mix uh, showing through if you can, um, and just pick out the uh, little bit more raised areas. We're just doing a little bit more of a focused highlight here. And this step is really where you're going to start to notice uh, your hard work paying off. <laughs> um, so you'll kind of see your, your uh, highlights established a little bit more. You'll kind of really get an understanding of what the gradient that you're going for is going to look like once it's finished. And uh, everything kind of starts to come together in this stage, at least for me. Uh, that's my experience. Um, Sometimes it, it, you know, working on those those first couple of layers can kind of be a little bit tedious, uh, a little bit uh, frustrating because you're not really seeing much in in terms of change and results. So once you get to these kind of steps, it really starts to pay off. And the other side of that is you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, it's a lot easier to make more mistakes with a uh, brighter color. And as you can see on the model here, we're starting to get a bit of a better gradient, uh, as long as I don't smack my camera around too much there. Moving on to our final step here, we're going to just do a uh, pure mutant hue now. Uh, try to avoid uh, the mix that we made earlier here on the palette. And with this, we are just going to pick out the very raised details, go even lighter than you did on the previous step, and try to leave that shining through as well. So. Um, only the very uh, highest raised details on, on the model here with this color, and you will get a very nice gradient. Um, just take your time with it. Again, be very careful. If you need to go back with any of the colors we used before, be sure to just go back with those and clean them up right away. Um, when you're layering like this, in my mind, it's easier to just fix your mistakes right away so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and, you know, that can be said for, uh, you know, hobbying in general, so. Um, keep that in mind while you're while you're doing your layering. And once again, they're your models. It's entirely up to you how uh, how far you want to go on the paint job or how not far you want to go. If you need them on the table quick, you don't have to go this far uh, with the layering. Um, it's really it's really up to you in the end. And as always, guys, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and to check the top link in the description for the giveaway. Uh, it usually runs about three days. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.